Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage, and today I am teaching Aaron how to ship. So we have lots of orders back here that I've already worked on from over the weekend. Now these are things that I have sold in my last Friday night sale where I get on and I sell things live. So we had lots and lots of packages that I, I did, but it's getting to the point now where I would like to be able to, for two things, Aaron wants to make more money, that's the first and foremost thing, and the second thing is I would not mind having a little bit more free time every morning during the week to be able to go out first thing and like go to sales and stuff. Because right now I'm pretty much waking up and I'm going and I'm coming in here for about an hour and a half every, every morning and working on like eight to ten shipments. So. We've got Aaron who will be coming in soon and I will start to show him the process to pack and ship items. Okay, here you are to learn how to ship. So let's go over the basics. Over here we have 12 by 12 by eights. This is the size that we use, you know, that, that size. Mm -hmm. It's the size like right down there, the big, big size. And then we have this, which is the shoebox size. Oh, okay. That yeah. is yeah. this size right here. Okay, so those are those boxes. And then down here we have the smaller size of this. This is called 776. Yeah. And then beside it we have 777. And then over here we have 666. And then over here under this we have 888. Now, the reason we have brown boxes that I just showed you, the brown ones, those are for items that weigh under a pound. Are you following? Under a pound is, is the brown. Okay. Yeah. You cannot ship things under a pound if they say priority mail. Any of these with the red and the white, any of those, any of those I showed you, they they cannot be shipped under a pound. So they have to be... Under, under a pound is the brown and then things that are over that go in the... Yeah. If you want to ship things under a pound, it has to be your package. So this could be under a pound too because right. it's mine. But anything I get from the United States Postal Service... They want a pound or more. Yeah, I mean, I think there might be a box that you could do it with first class, but I don't have that box. But yes, it all this is all priority mail, and that's the mail class. It's called priority mail. So they say that right on the thing, and it says it right on the, the label whenever you stick it on priority mail. So that's kind of a rundown of the boxes, and that's pretty much all the boxes that we have. So now what we can do is actually, and I have your computer up here. Oh. Yeah. We'll You've be. Got things ready to roll on an entire stone liner. That must have been around a while because I don't remember ever photoing that. Um. I don't think I did that. I is think. That Etsy? No, this is all on eBay. Oh. I We're, thought that some of that. This was is consumed. eBay. Okay. You logged into eBay. This is eBay. Oh. So let's go ahead and get those plates. I don't remember filming that. Let's get I the. Should have. Let's get the plates. Okay, they're probably over here or somewhere. Plates are supposed to be over here unless it's on this. Yeah, our inventory has really dwindled a lot. Is this that just... Tiger Snowman? Yeah, that's them. I guess I did do that. Okay. So, this is an interesting one, a first, an interesting first one to do, and I probably wouldn't be my first option to, to show. Um, because plates is one of the hardest things to ship considering how, how heavy they are. Mm -hmm. Feel that? Yeah. It, they're heavy. So this is an interesting piece to ship because it's multiple pieces. Now, whenever you have more, more than one thing in a box, you always have to worry about the item, like the different items in that same box hurting each other. Yeah. So anytime you ship something, you have real, really two things to worry about. Outside influences on the box, meaning it gets crushed or they throw it up against a wall or they whatever, or internal things. So in this case, you're going to have both problems to worry about. You worry about the plates themselves bumping into each other. The way to, 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 con to keep that from happening is either putting bubble wrap or paper in between each one and then wrapping them tightly together. You wrap them tightly together so that there is no movement. So you would have real, your tape, see that even that bounce, you hear? Yeah. You don't want that. You want them to be so pressed up against each other, they act as one solid unit. And even better than that, we could put a little bubble wrap in between each one. So what we're gonna do is we have bubble wrap right over here, and we're gonna put one sheet in between each plate. Because we're taping it all together, we don't want tape on the item. So we're gonna put tape, or we're gonna put bubble wrap on the bottom. Oh, okay. 
and it eventually will be on the top of the stack too. And then whenever you wrap the tape around it, the tape will not be touching the plates. Right. So now you can put another piece on that one. Should be about right here. I'll find that line again. Yeah, but you don't have to because you can hold it here. You can hold it. You can kind of visually find it. Yeah, it'll it'll tear. So, so you're just gonna you're just gonna like see how I grabbed it sort of in the middle here. Yeah. It, it's just. I guess you have to get a feel for it. So this is the next piece. And then we can put this one on top like that. And we can come over like this and get the next piece like that. Some bubble wraps are harder to tear than others. This one is a thicker plastic, but you can see the line, I mean, 12 inches. The, I think the trick of is knowing just by looking at it, like Probably what so. what about 12 inches? Now, I mean, you have like a, a like a five inch wiggle room here. So I mean, if you're grabbing it way over here, you're gonna be fine, you know? Yeah. Like you're overshooting it because it's really over here, but so see what I'm doing? I'm just putting like that, and then we're gonna cap it off. We're gonna cap it off with this last piece right here. So that's all we're doing. Now, to keep all this as one unit, we're gonna tape it, like I said. So we're gonna go ahead and put this right here on the side, like this. Now keep in mind, this top piece is gonna move back and forth. We just wanna make sure that it's aligned with the other ones on this side for now. And the best way to do it is actually to take the whole stack and kind of pull it off this, to the side of the table. Right. And then hold the top piece like this, bring in the bottom piece with your hand. Right. You're, I'm pushing down on this whole side and tightly pull it in. Okay, we're gonna do this three more times over here, over here, over here. So we'll flip it around this way, grab another piece. These, these like things that. you need to change out on the tape run. Yeah, that's easy to do. And then we'll, we'll do the same way. This time, because it's already stuck on, we can put some, some, we can pull the other side, see? So now we can pull this other side, push down, that's the main thing, because what we're doing is we don't want any movement on the, in the plates. The bubble wrap is a second defense for any movement. We'll do the same thing here. I could just see someone that was not thinking right, just put all the plates in there in the box and not do anything else. Yeah, They'd and probably it, be cracked by well, the time they reach where they were going. It de yeah, it's short, it really depends on the other packing job they do. This is just for added security. I have seen, I have seen people do that, and it and it can work, but it's not optimal for sure. Okay, and then you're gonna. This is the last one. We're pushing down. And I, I kind of get the idea on that on that step. Well, this is an important one because. Right. So what I'm gonna do? I'm holding it from the bottom at this point. Yeah, I don't hear much movement. You won't feel any movement either. You won't feel like a thud, a thud, a thud. Right. It's it's all it's all one big unit, and that's what we're looking for. So it's going to act as a solid object and not multiples clanking up on top of each other. Right. So the next thing to do is actually find the box for it. So in this case, unfortunately, what we have here is about a 10 or 11 inch plate, I think. And yeah, it's a 10 inch plate. Now what we're working with is a 12 inch box. That's pretty tight. Now, if you line could that up- Could be a good thing. Uh, it, it, um, it could be. Um, and, and so I'm trying to weigh my options here on what I think we should do. Unfortunately, I have a lot of 12 by 12 by eight boxes and not very many like uh, 14 by 14 by 14. And I wish I did have 14, 14, 14 because uh, that's a really good size, but Walmart stopped carrying them. That's right. So, so basically, let's see if my memory's right, you need this. You're right. So we're going to go ahead and use a 12, 12, 8. It's not the most optimal thing to do, but we will, we will see if I can manage putting this together because I okay. have done this in the past at other jobs. Oh, well that helps a lot. I just got to remember, I think you go these bottom two go first, then these, then you got a tape. Yeah, that should be correct. Oh. Have you used a tape gun before? Oh, yeah. I have. It's been a little bit, but let me get. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure you're over, you're centered over it. Okay, that worked a lot easier than I thought. Yeah, I've done it before. <laughs> and you'll just get better with that. This, I have the tension up pretty high because it makes it better for that tape, meaning it, it's harder to pull it. 
but you'll get used to that tension and, and how to. I that, think what job I did. Oh, I did it at those well, factory jobs. So the so. muscle. Ma so what you need to do, you got to make sure this is all pressed down. Oh, okay. So we're gonna. No, don't be dainty with it. Roll like push. Put the gun down and use both hands and push that tape into each other. No, no, no. Keep it here. That table scares me. The A table. Little. It's still. It's. It's. We improved it when we put it, those the boards table. on, but it's. Look. Set it down. The table's not going anywhere. Okay. Okay, now one thing I don't like about this is I don't like how little tape there is on the side. These oh. are heavy plates. It's I guess we'll do another band. I don't usually do more than one band, but because it's only here, go ahead and start it like about half the box. Oh, you go way down there with it then. On, some, on something heavy I would, yes. Okay. Right down there. There you go. i fix these. Yeah, just go ahead and pull them down so they're out of your way. And the first thing we're going to do is put a layer of paper, crushed paper on the bottom. So this, you know, this is pretty much all I use besides Correct. the bubble wrap. So we're going to twirl it around. You're going to use quite a lot. So keep going with it. You just tell me when for a minute here. What's three times around? Four, five. Okay, go ahead and tear it off so you can see what you're working with. Yep. Okay, here's... Here, I'm going to show you something. Besides what you're doing, open up the whole piece and make a snake with it. Oh. Like crimp, the, crimp it like a snake. i got to get the top. You mean just put it... Yeah, like do go down the whole length of it. Grab it by the center and fold it in half. Okay, now fold it in half again. Okay. Now you now you can put this in on the bottom. This will be part of it. I think you'll still need more. What I want you to do, I see what you're doing. You're kind of being a little. These are heavy plates, so it's going to settle. So you're going to be push. You need to push down because you need to simulate what's going to happen with this, and you want to feel how far down this paper is really going to go. Mm -hmm. So it, we're going to need another one just as thick as this. This is about, for anybody wondering, this is about an inch thick. I'm going for about two inches thick. He does not like it. Now you might be wondering what the point of the, the making the snake is. I just personally feel like it gives the paper more structure rather than just like folded waffled sheets. All right, let's try to evenly disperse that on the, the bottom. So feel it with your hand. Is, there, is the paper pretty much even across the whole bottom? Oh, there's paper across the No, no, what I'm saying is, do you feel more paper over here as you do over here? Okay. See a little was, more on that side. Right, because you put it in as a clump. Oh, wait, just, wait, just, just stop. No, just stop. Just stop. Hold this camera and I'm going to show you something. Okay, so this is the piece you have. And let's just think how it's going to lay in there. You can put it in like this. See? See no. how I just made a big broad sheet? We already had a pretty even bottom to it. And then if you put it in like this, it's a nice even layer. Right. What you were do essentially doing is you were just throwing a clump in down in this corner and it wasn't really equally going across the whole bottom. But now we have a really solid base that's going to go down a little bit as it's as it as these heavy plates go in. Just like that. There in. <laughs> so there's two ways we can wrap this once it's in this box. We can either Go back in with a paper and fill around it, or fill that paper around it and then put the object in. It depends on what you're doing, but I think in the case of these plates, it'll be best if we fill it around the object and then set the whole thing in. Okay, that's uh, right there. I can get it out of there. Go ahead and make that snake again. Now the snake's very important because what we're going to be doing is keeping it in that snake. It's going to be wrapping around the plates as one, as one like, thing. 
So here's a question for you with that, why you got the camera running. Mm -hmm. Who taught you the snake method here? Um, I don't think anybody did. And I mean, if they did, I can't remember. But it's just kind of a, a natural way to do it. You're going to be wrapping it around the plate. So this oh. is, so you can, so yeah, you could do it that way or you could hold the, the bunch of plates in one hand and wrap it with the other. Find out what's easier here. Okay, no. Here, let me show you how I do it and then you can wrap, I'll give it to you and then you can do it, okay? Here, you can take the camera, I'll show you. So you've got the plates in this hand. Are, am I on camera? Is this on camera? Uh, you aren't, but the uh, plates are. Okay, so here's your paper, here's the plates. I'm putting it up against myself. Oh, up against you, okay. Holding it and wrapping it around. See the end there? It's back up against me. I'm silking going, grabbing it with my thumb, wrapping it over that part. And there we go, okay? The last thing we could do to, um, well, not the last thing, but to help offset any movement is we could shove a little paper in each of these corners. It's gonna, it's not gonna take much, so go ahead and tear off a little bit of paper. That's too much. Oh, just like Price is Right. Dang, that's too much. Yeah, right, that should be 20 right there. Go ahead and ball that up. Ball this Just time. ball it up and put it in each of these corners. It can stick out a little bit too because we're gonna be filling it on Doing top. It again in all corners. The rest of the, the other three. Here, go the diagonal now. Okay. Yeah, this this is pretty pretty good. One more form. And then after you do that, I wanna kind of regroup and show, and show you things that are happening. So what we're doing by putting paper all around here, I guess if you haven't figured that out, is we are trying to protect this item from all six sides, the bottom, the top, and then these four sides, because we don't know when, when this box is gonna be, it, it might fall on this side, on the ground. It could fall. Okay. The way they operate sometimes. Right, well, it probably will. So we need to make sure that no matter how it falls, it's protected on that side where it hits the concrete or the floor or whatever. So we hope that the, we hope that it stays upright or upside down, but in the chance that it, you know, we have to we have to protect it. So now what we're going to do is put in just paper. We're going to backfill the top with paper. So we'll use crushed paper. But I mean, we really have two options here. And I don't want to get into the, the second option, but the first option, like I said, is just you throw a lot of paper in. The second option, which we're not going to do right now, is we could cut it down. And you've probably watched me cut down boxes kind of in passing before. But you would take a ruler, essentially, and um, come down and then just cut off the Try corners. Have a limited amount of that to do, hopefully. Well, it, it is good to do if you are trying to not use so much paper. And we're, at this point, why I mention it is because at this point, we're going to be putting in about three inches of paper, whereas we know on the bottom there's about um, two inch, uh, one and a half, two inches at this point since it's been pushed down. So we have so much on the top that, you know, it's questionable. But we're just going to go ahead and fill the rest of this with paper. So that's going to be a lot of paper. We'll just throw that in. I want to say one other thing. You just you just did another situation where you made one giant ball, mm -hmm. but I want to I want to challenge you to make more of a, this, this shape. We need to fill up this 12 inch section, and you made about an eight inch a real eight inch ball with just a tiny bit on each side. No. You wanted it like that. Yeah. Not reshape that, that one for the other side, I guess. Have done the snake on the well we're just we're just trying to make sure the paper is evenly distributed you know what I'm saying okay now you have a, a hollow spot in the middle so we need one more in the middle yeah too bad of a paste for the little bit. right there that'll be good yep All right. okay it's Got done another step. see this gap push those together 
bring this to your stomach push this side in see that gaps closed okay now push down with your hands you can back this whole thing up off over here so that it's away from you and then you can extend the gun How far down we going? He'll about meet the about other. midway. Right there. Come straight out. Pull it straight out. You could take your other hand and actually do that while you're going too. Now take your hands and push it down hard on both sides. Okay. Now, last thing to do on this person is write their name on top so we know whose it oh, is. Yeah. So that'll be on your computer. Because you we don't do the labels till they're all boxes are done normally. That's the way I do it. Let's see. Where was her name again? Oh, K. Patrick. K. No, no, mm -mm. no. You oh, have no, to get this up right. Here, it's up here. Now this is important. I, 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 I thought it was underneath for a minute. But I know. I see it up there. But do you know how to prop? So we know that these were plates, and you look back and you see the plates, and then oh. you and there's her name. Evan Morrison. Yeah, E V I N. Okay, the next is the Black Americana Chalkware. You gotta remember where I put that. Oh, it's right here. Now this should be, well, let's see if I can figure out what box we need. I'm gonna point this out and we'll, then I'll, we'll see what he says. Okay. Oh, uh, if I was, I would grab this one. Okay, I or would. Or I would grab one of those that, well, no, it's not under a pound, so. What, it, what? I think this one wants more than. No, that's under a pound. So we're supposed to use the solid browns? So here's, this. this can be two ways. If you go over a pound, you're going to get insurance included. I don't necessarily worry so much about the insurance because something like this by itself is not going to really break. So, I mean, not the way I package things and I'm going to teach him how to package things. So I personally would do it as a first class item and I would save that dollar and a half or two dollars. Of course, I'm paying for the box because I pay for these boxes, but uh, it, it does sort of add up over like a hundred items. I mean, you're gonna save so much money by doing first class. So go ahead and grab the six by six by six. I would say that's a great size for it. No, I don't. So something like this just needs about one sheet, that's all. All right, now the best way to do something like this. Let's see. If... No, I was gonna show you how to do it. I'm just seeing if I could do it the mm, way. No, uh-uh, no. I wouldn't have done that, I've said no. Okay, he don't like my way. Okay, so I would just go to undiagonal, starting upside down, and you're gonna pull it like this. Okay, that, that makes sense. Wait, 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 wait. Similar to wrapping a sub. So you do that like that, then you can take this side and go in, and then the other side and go in. That's similar to wrapping a sub. Right, and you're gonna way. get maximum bubble wrap on the front that way. Okay, now, wait a minute. So look about, look at your object, look at the box. Here's the tip. The strongest point on a box is the corners. So for something like this, you can just kind of hold it like this and say, well, I could put it like this, or I could put it like this, or I could put it like this. The strongest way and the, the way that actually gives you the most um, protection is on the corner. Because if you look, you have about an inch, inch yeah. to there and an inch to here on the sides. Look, I can't even turn it without turning the box. It's very close. Now that could work. For, I mean, it could work, but this is the best way on the corner. So you lay it like that? No, I didn't. I, I would lay it like this. Oh, it'll fall if you over. lay it, no. Okay. <laughs> First, you, we put paper around this. What what I was doing is just showing you the dry run of how it can oh, okay. how it can fit. So you're gonna grab more paper. That's right there enough. And you're gonna make a snake with it. And this time we're gonna be wrapping it around the object like I showed you with the plate, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be much easier because it's small and lightweight. So start at the end, not the middle. No, no, I no. said I said no. We're, undo that. We're, we're doing it the other way. So you're gonna wrap it this way. Grab your, grab your end. Oh, in there like that. Okay. Just nice. down the line, okay. Yeah. 
Do you understand the difference here? What what you are about to do? It's a minor, it's a minor difference. You are about to wrap the paper on this end, on this end, and that end. Yeah. And you already have a bat padding of paper. You didn't have any on this side, so whenever you go to put it in like this, it wouldn't have made sense. It takes two hands a little bit in this case. Just gonna put it in there. You can take your thumbs. Do one of those. I'm not being forceful though. I don't have to be. I'm just right. making sure that that paper, so we've got lots of paper here, lots of paper there, on this side and this side. I would actually say that this is done. Okay. Now, on the plates, we, sh we shoved paper in there, but this is so lightweight, I can't even get it to move open like that. Yeah. So, it's not coming out of the box, so therefore, it doesn't need extra weight or paper or material. All we need is a little bit of paper on top, and then our card, and then we're done. And it's just a little bit of paper, that's all it's gonna need. That's actually enough right there. Do you know how to tear it down the, the line? Okay, you're getting better at the tearing part. Yeah. And then our card on top. And then you can close it up. Does that have to be outside or in? I guess do it don't mean? matter. Oh, on these it doesn't matter uh, because there's no markings to put the label somewhere. Okay, now flip it back the other way. You just you just made it upside down. Oh. Yeah, be careful of that. So this is the right side up. There's a difference because our paper, our the thing you just put in is on this side. Did oh. you catch that you turned that upside down? Mm -mm. Well, you picked it up and then you turned it upside down. And that might not seem like a big deal, but when we put our label on, people are gonna be opening it this way. And if they open it upside down, they may never see the card that we put in because it's going to be in the very very bottom okay right so our label is going to be on this side so therefore the name needs to be on this side all right this is jeffrey from the future and i just finished editing the video but as i was watching it i want to say a couple things about how i dealt with aaron and the different total qualities i expressed so i want to say that i i i maybe come across a little stern or blunt but that's just how i explain things to people has nothing to do with him, has nothing to do with uh, anything like that, really. It's just how I explain things that are very important. Shipping is a very integral part of reselling, and my business specifically. It is almost one of the most important aspects of reselling, because if things cannot safely arrive to people's houses, there is no business. So stay tuned for the next video in the series where I will continue to teach Aaron how to ship other items. For now, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.